Okay, I think I got it going. So, let's get it on. And boom. I think that's going to do it. Hopefully, at least. We'll have to see. Okay, I think I got it going. So... Looks like we are up and running. Thank you for joining me. I certainly appreciate it. I apologize for that. I don't know why sometimes it just decides to not work. That's <laughs> just the way it goes. Uh, I don't know exactly why. It just uh, it just seems to just. Eh, I'm gonna make you do a little a little bit extra work today. That's what I'm gonna do. That's just what I'm going to do. I don't know. We hear and see you. That's good to see. Good to hear. Thank you, Kabuki Kid. Thank you, Tom, for uh, passing that info along. Hello to everyone else. Uh, I don't know if Spurs fan is still here, but if you are, hello, Lewis. Uh, I know that you are on your second lunch, um, that you'll probably be around afterwards. But uh, thank you for being here. Nuno is here. Thank you for being here. Tom Kabuki, thank you. Zexto is here. Hello, hello. We are live. And always as you're going live. Well, I mean, that's when it's going to not work, right? It's not going to not work if I'm not going live. Um, but uh, that is how it usually tends to go, right? It, it, it just... Uh, <clears throat> I don't know why. I don't know why. I had all the buttons pushed, had all the things plugged in, everything was fine. And usually I, you know, I, I uh, let it go until, uh, until I'm, you know, we don't turn our mics on until we're ready to actually go live. Eclipse. Oh, Krispy Kremes are my favorite. <laughs> um, we only had like 30% uh, uh, coverage on our Eclipse up here in Washington State. I didn't go outside and look at it, but uh, I was busy doing stuff in here. It is what it is. 30% um, coverage is, you know, it's not like you, you know, if it were something like, I don't know, maybe twice that, 60% or more, okay, yeah, I'd, I'd probably want to go out and, but, you know, a third of the uh, sun, you know, well, as opposed to when you are recording a video to edit. Well, Actually, that actually happened last night when JT and I were recording uh, the next uh, bottom five and top five. Uh, we had to re-record about half of the bottom five because the, uh, the receiver, for some reason, uh, just stopped, stopped working. Powered down, um, and we didn't realize it until I went up there to stop the recording before we started recording the top five, and I noticed that it was off. So I put brand new batteries. Uh, well, they're rechargeables, but I, they were fully charged in, and something went haywire. So we had to re-record about half of the bottom five last night and then record the top five. So it took a little bit longer than usual, but it's no big deal. JT brought over a couple of games. He brought over his... Uh, Foundations of Rome, and my goodness, what a monstrosity that is in all the best ways. Goodness gracious, I chuckle every time I see people carrying that box around at a convention that they've just checked out of a library or something to that effect. It cracks me up. It's such a huge box, but oh my goodness, that is such a fun game. Um, totally overwrought, in my opinion, um, but such delectable overwroughtness. I mean, it is such an amazing looking game. The table presence is off the charts with that game. I loved playing that game. I cannot, I, I wanted to go buy my own copy immediately. That's, I, I came back off the ledge, don't get me wrong, but oh my goodness, I wanted to go and buy a copy immediately, 
immediately. I didn't even, and I don't even know that I would have felt any remorse whatsoever. I probably would have because I did finally come off of that ledge, but such a fun game. And the production quality is, oh my goodness, so good. Anyway, we played that, and then we also played Sweet Mess, also a very fun game. Um, I, I love uh, food-based games. I just think they're fun. Um, and um, Steam Up is one that I've really enjoyed, but S Sweet Mess puts Steam Up to shame. Uh, it's such a fun game, uh, and I think the, um, the um, I don't know, the production quality, I, I think Steam Up has a bit of a step up on, on production quality with, with all of the really, you know, all of the dim sum baskets that comes in that thing. I love that, and I love how the table presence of that, but all of the other stuff that comes with uh, Sweet Mess, like the, the player boards, how they are, you know, kind of... Um, uh, well, they're made by game trays, but they're they're like everybody has their own little game tray as their player board, and uh, you can store the tokens in it. And the little tokens are a little bit on the uh, chintzy side. Um, J JT and I were both saying that we wish they had a little bit more heft to them. But uh, Sweet Mess was a really fun game, really fun game. J JT and I tied for that one, and I think I won Foundations of Rome. Um, so it was. Uh, it was a great night, a great night altogether. We, you know, we worked a little bit recording those bottom five and top five lists, but, um, you know, we just had a good time of uh, playing a couple games that we just wanted to play. We didn't need to play them, and uh, I think that's needful uh, every once in a while. So that was cool. Uh, let's see here. Uh, <clears throat> as opposed to, yeah, uh, we got like 92%. Wow, uh, Kabuki, that must have been cool to see, but was mostly good using viewing glasses. Yeah. We will blame JT then. <laughs> have you played it before? No, I have not played it before. Um, I had just seen people walking around with it at conventions. I mean, literally hefting it. I think I, maybe I'm mistaken, but I think I even saw two people like, like carrying it together. Each person had one side of the box, and they were carrying it together. I, it, it just it cracks me up. That box is so huge. You literally have to. It's like carrying a, a box around in a moving box. That's what it looks like, and it just cracks me up every time. But yeah, call me slow. I was assuming Krispy Kreme sold a donut or something called an Eclipse. Uh, only ate Krispy Kreme once. Was good though. Still, I played Foundations of Rome on my list to play. I have been wanting to play it. And uh, JT finally got his copy in, so we went ahead and did it. And uh, we taught Jess how to play as well. So it was just the three of us, but we all did pretty well. And the scores were all pretty tight as well, um, which, is a, which is a cool thing for me. I like it when scores are tight. I don't want to get slammed, and I don't want to slam somebody else with, with points or anything like that. So I like it when points are pretty, uh, pretty much, you know, kind of... Uh, close knit. I think maybe 10 points uh, separated uh, first and last. And I only won by a couple of points. Uh, I just barely edged out JT. So Krispy Kreme is really good. Yes, it is. Uh, it is my uh, donut of choice. And that is including all of those, you know, um, I don't, uh, all of the the gourmet donut shops that go up that have these clumps of dough. Ugh. I just don't like cakey donuts that are too dense. I just don't like them. Uh, Krispy Kreme, however, chef's kiss. They are the best. Um, <clears throat> yes, amazing production is absolutely right. JT also got the, uh, I don't know if it's standard, but uh, he also got the wash added to all of the buildings, and that just really makes them pop. Really makes them pop. They literally, I mean, they are, they're miniature buildings, but they literally look like real miniature buildings. And they're just, it's just an amazing, amazing production quality. Arcane Wonders knocked it out of the park. 
Um, so I know I, I think they're coming up with a uh, a a more retail supportable version of it. I think it's going to be a different city though. I don't think it's going to be Rome. I can't remember what what city it was. Mm, but uh, they are coming out with that pretty soon. I think um, maybe it's this year. I don't know if it's soon. But that's coming up. Um, so, yeah. Um, pretty cool so far. Yeah, Eclipse. Yeah, I put that in there because... Uh, or chose to ignore. No, I didn't choose to ignore. I don't choose to ignore anything. Uh, why am I getting... Why am I being blamed? And the wash was extra. There you go. Thank you, JT. I don't know what JT, I don't know what JT was being blamed for. Oh, maybe because of the audio. Um, but you had nothing to do with the audio, neither last night nor today. So it was just a joke. Watch the video with Anna. Have you played any games with her? JT made it sound like she was good at games. No, uh, she was here while I was at Dice Tower West. Um, so, and then she was here for a couple of days after I got back, but, uh, we didn't get to, we, we weren't, I wasn't able to go over there and meet her, um, or anything like that. So, uh, to answer your question, Tom, no. Um, but yeah, that's just the way it is. Uh, we're doing a couple of things, um, tomorrow. Did you get my message tonight about the whole blah, 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 blah. <sighs> Sorry, um, had to send a message back to uh, Jess. But uh, tomorrow, I, I, I landed on a tentative name for Tuesdays. We're going to call them Time Honored Tuesdays. I was looking for, I just put in a thing for... Um, Synonyms of classical, and time-honored was one of those synonyms. And if you look up the word time-honored, it means that it is well-honored or valued because uh, it, it, it has been uh, valued for a long time or something to that effect. Anyway, I just thought that uh, time-honored Tuesdays will work. So Tuesdays is going to be all about older games. Um, Tuesday morning is going to be, it belongs in a museum, and then we'll take a break for lunch and, and getting some other things done, and I'm, I will probably be shooting uh, the Dice Tower reviews during that break, and then we'll come back uh, Tuesday afternoons, and Jess and I will play um, a couple of older games. Uh, tomorrow, um, we're actually going to, I'm going to do the two games um, that we're going to play in the afternoon. I'm going to do those for the uh, It Belongs in a Museum. It won't always be that way, but these two games, I think I can pull that off um, uh, because they're games that I've, I know pretty well and uh, we'll be able to do it. Uh, but uh, uh, UT... It's one of our favorite states to visit, Utah. Utah. Older, f older games. Yep. Hmm. <clears throat> oh. JT lied to me last night. Hmm. Oh. Okay. Oh. Interesting. Question mark. So, my wife picked up some, um, uh, Jesse picked up some K-Pods last night for our Keurig and trying a new flavor. Um, and this one was called Snickers. Um, and I like Snickers. It's actually one of, the, one of the very few candy bars that I really enjoy. Um, I don't have them very often any, anymore because it's just a, a carb bomb. But... Um, no, not flat beer, but the Snickers coffee, um, it's quite strange, actually. So, 
probably added too much stuff. I don't think I did, because I didn't add too much stuff to, I don't know. Hmm. It's just a wee bit much, that's all. Uh, but uh, you probably added too much stuff. That's probably true. It's not bad. It's just strange. Um, doesn't taste like a Snickers, first of all. Snickers coffee, that sounds pretty odd. Well, it doesn't sound, if you like a mocha, it doesn't sound that odd. Because, I mean, at, at that point, it's just, you know, basically chocolate flavored um, coffee. And that's pretty much what a mocha is. Um, I mean, with other things added to it, of course. And I added hazelnut creamer and a little bit of chocolate syrup to it. So maybe I did add too much. Maybe I should have tasted it first. That's just what it is. It's not bad. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> Ragged Edge 68 is here. Good afternoon, all. Good afternoon, Doug. Good to see you. Um, sounds gross, Eric says. Well, thanks. Appreciate it. Uh, doesn't really sound that good. Well, <clears throat> to all of you. Um, I've, I usually stick to my black rifle coffee, um, and I put in either hazelnut or coconut cream creamer, one of the two, and then, um, about a tablespoon of chocolate syrup, and that's about it, uh, zero sugar coffee, uh, I, most of this, if I say stuff, just assume that it's zero sugar, because that's what I pretty much do, um, uh, but anyway. Don't like coffee, so I won't experience it no matter what. <laughs> Vanessa is here. Hello, hello. A little late, but I'm here. Good to see you, Vanessa. Hello. Glenn Just is here. Butterfinger coffee, anyone? Actually, Glenn, Butterfinger back in the day was, uh, it was a toss-up between Snickers and Butterfingers uh, to what I would want to have. The only thing with Butterfinger is that it gets stuck in your teeth. Um that candy stuff on the inside of it. I don't know exactly what it is, but I guess it's buttered some type of toffee or something that I affect. But it gets stuck in my teeth, and that always kind of ticked me off. But uh, really enjoyed Butterfingers. Um, I don't know about Butterfinger coffee, though. You want a Snickers? Eat one. You want coffee? Drink coffee. All right, listen, Eric. Stop being so logical. Uh, leave combos to the roll and rights. <laughs> Toffee is famous for getting stuck in teeth. Yes, I know. <clears throat> I saw the eclipse today, Vanessa says. It was 98%. Oh, my gosh. Not completely covered, but it was still pretty cool. Indy got four minutes of totality. It was pretty cool. Oh, okay, Indiana. Got it, got it, Indianapolis. Uh, temperature dropped 10 degrees or so. Uh, I can see why people travel to see totality. Yeah, uh, that's about the size of it. Um, that, and that's pretty much why I didn't even uh, worry about it. 30% for us was what it was going to be. And I don't know. Uh, I, don't, I didn't feel like burning my retinas. I also didn't have any uh, uh, glasses or sunglasses or shades or those little devices that everybody's running around with uh, and taking pictures of, of themselves with. Uh, on social media. I didn't have any of those. Um, I think Jess was able to look at it. Um, she borrowed some some of those uh, shades from from somebody. I don't know who. Uh, you want to <laughs> you want to be interesting? Drink tequila. No, I don't want to be that interesting, actually. Thank you for that, though, JT. Uh, a friend of mine in Indianapolis got a good view. Uh, Caipirina? Uh, Kaiparina is my favorite. Kaiparina? Um, I don't know what that is. Kaiparina. Yeah, you want welding glasses or rated eclipse glasses if you want to look directly at it or build you a viewer. I had friends travel to Ohio and Texas to see totality. Yeah, that just seems like a long way to go for a very short amount of time. Um, I don't know that I'd be able to uh, talk myself into doing that, but you know, it is what it is. People, people can do what they want to do. 
I'm going to close that, and then I'm going to open this, and maybe open this a little bit more. Yeah, something like that. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. I don't even know there was an eclipse until my wife said that there was about an hour ago. <laughs> and we didn't really talk about it last night that much. Um, and again, that's just because that's probably more my fault than... Jess was excited about it. She she She... She loves doing those kinds of things, uh, those, you know, once in a very long time type of things. She loves doing that type of stuff. Uh, Caipirina is a famous Brazilian drink like mojitos in Cuba. Ah, okay. Uh, let's see here. What cons are you set to go to this year, Sam? Um, well, a couple of them are still up in the air. Origins is still up in the air. Um, whether or not I'm going to do that, I haven't heard back from LTN, whether or not I'm going to be going with them to Origins this year, but I am going to be going to uh, Gen Con and I believe PAX Unplugged. Those are the two with that I'm going to be going with uh, Love Thy Nerd 2. And then I'm also going to be going to Dice Tower East. Uh, uh, the family's going to be with me on that one. And then I'm also going to go to the Dice Tower Retreat as well. So those are the... Uh, those are the, what, four? Four conventions I think I'll be going to this year. Um, so, okay. To it. Board games, talk to me. Uh, Jesse excited for something? That doesn't surprise me. <laughs> that's, that's about it. Uh, the Ohio friends are only about three hours away. The other friends in Texas had planned to go there for a while. One of them is from there. Got it. Okay. Well, that makes a little bit more sense. Sounds yummy, Nuno. Yeah. We debated driving to upstate New York to watch the totality of the eclipse. In the end, we stayed to, we stayed home. 92% was pretty good. It also ended up being cloudy there, so maybe we dodged a bullet. Yeah. That's probably so as well. Um, yeah, so board games. Uh, we already started talking about Tuesdays. We've got... Um, well, actually, tonight, uh, before we get to tomorrow, tonight we're going to have an unboxing of Divinus going up at 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific, which will be 7 p.m. for all you guys and gals over on the East Coast. Uh, and that is going to be JT and Anna again. They did that actually before the list. Uh, so there was a, a little bit of a time uh, flip there. So no worries. Um, uh, but that's going to be going up this after uh, this evening, uh, or this afternoon, I guess, whatever is best for you. And then tomorrow morning, we've got um, It Belongs in a Museum coming up, and we're going to be looking at Odin's Ravens and Raptor. And then tomorrow afternoon, we're going to do Time Honored Tuesdays, and uh, Jess and I are going to play Odin's Ravens and Raptor tomorrow afternoon. And... Um, so that's that's going to be a pretty cool thing. Wednesday, I'll be doing a live review. Uh, I haven't decided just yet which one I'm going to be reviewing just yet. But um, it will be uh, something interesting, at the very least. Uh, we'll do that tomorrow. Uh, I'm sorry, on Wednesday. Thursday... Um, <sighs> mm, Thursday, I don't know what I'm going to be playing solo yet. Uh, but uh, we'll do something solo probably on Thursday. Another thing that will be coming up on Thursday, a buddy of mine um, uh, named uh, Les, he is, I've, I've talked about him before in other videos. I don't know exactly which video it was, but uh, he uh, kind of makes mock-ups, not mock-ups. Um, he DIY produces... Um, Star Wars themed versions of other games. So the one that he's actually done this time was a uh, speeder bikes on indoor version of chariot races. And he's making uh, a little mini series of videos that I'm gonna host on my channel uh, here on the flip side where he's going to talk about and show and do uh, how he made that um, speeder bike on speeder bikes on indoor version of chariot races. So that's probably going to come up on uh, Thursday 
morning and then Thursday afternoon uh, I'll be doing a, a solo play of something and then Friday we're going to be doing um, something. Um, JT's, JT's work has been a little a little um, stressful for him and it's causing him to have to work a little bit more on, on Fridays which is opposite of how he wanted it to go. Uh, so we're kind of waiting to see how Friday goes. If And, and if he has to work again on Friday, then, then Jess and I will do something here. But um, it's kind of a toss-up right now between Marrakesh and um, um, the Sixth Realm, which is a new prototype that came in from Final Frontier. And if, uh, But it's a heavy game, which is why I asked JT to kind of take it by the horns and and see if he can wrangle it in if jt can't do that we'll we'll do something else we're we're gonna be doing a live stream on friday afternoon as per usual uh, but we don't know exactly who's going to be involved yet so that's just how things go here um because i am um you know we just sometimes that's just how it works out it's no big no big deal that's just how it is um friday night if you're in the area, and by the area, I mean the Pacific Northwest. If you're within driving distance of Wenatchee, Washington, uh, Friday night is going to be our board game night at Steamers West in downtown Wenatchee. Um, I made a post about it on Facebook, um, and I'll be doing one on Twitter later. Uh, but uh, you can check that out. Uh, Steamers West is in downtown uh, Wenatchee. And we hold a board game night from 5 to 9 o'clock, uh, the second Friday of every month. And this Friday is the second Friday of the month. So we're going to be doing that Friday night from 5 to 9 p.m. So if you're in the area, come on by, say hi, play some games, and enjoy it. The flatbread pizzas are to die for. They are very good. They, they, they have... Uh, very, um, you know, they have a very robust drink menu. If you don't like coffee, they have teas. If you don't like teas, they have Italian sodas. Uh, they've also got, you know, uh, other kinds of uh, pop and, and that kind of thing in uh, refrigerators. They also have pastries. Um, they've got a number of different things uh, that uh, are, are great for snacks and stuff like that. Um, and it's just a they're 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 friends of ours, the owners, and uh, they're great people. So we like supporting them this way. Uh, so that's this Friday, April. Let's see, it's eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. April twelfth. Yep. So that's going to be cool. Solo Thursday, the Magnificent. I don't own the Magnificent. Borrow JTs. I don't know how to play the Magnificent. Uh, <clears throat> Um, is that the new name? Yeah, that's what I'm going with right now. Um, so we got 99.1%, St. Louis Keith says. Nothing compared to the 12 seconds of totality we got in 2017. Wow. That's really cool, actually. Uh, never heard of Divinus. Can you tell us something about it? It is basically... Um, I am out on that list. <laughs> oh, top one. <laughs> um, okay, so um, from the description that JT gave, uh, and well, rather let me let me put it because that may that makes it sound like he didn't give a good description. From what I remember of the description that JT gave in the video that I edited, um, uh, and again, it wasn't a whole lot of editing. It's just a little bit of in between, but. Um, it's basically uh, Norse mythology versus Greek mythology, and uh, you can you can actually change the course of time, or how th how and you can make one mythology pow more powerful than the other, in, in some way, shape, or form by the choices that you make in the game. Uh, I believe it's a campaign scenario based game, but I'm not absolutely sure of that. Um, the miniatures looked really cool. The artwork looked even better. I know there, there were some mats uh, on there that uh, looked super cool. So I'm looking forward to uh, getting that one played. It looks really cool. Uh, but you can check it out on uh, Board Game Geek and that'll probably give you a better, um, a better uh, 
inclination of what it looks. I mean, if I go to uh, if I go to Board Game Geek here, right quick, um, we can do that. Actually, I should be able to just pop it up. There it is. Um, so the designer is Philip Malinsky. Um, Lucky Duck Games is the publisher. Dice rolling. It's a legacy game. Uh, so you're going to be consuming part of it. I know that they, he also bought some recharge packs as well so that he could play it more than once. Um, it is a campaign some scenario mission uh, game. There's tile placement, variable player powers, and variable setup. Um, looks like it's a digital hybrid. There's an app and a website that's uh, required. Hmm. Interesting. Um, so, uh, looks like the Dice Tower just reviewed it 17 days ago. Uh, preview from another person. Uh, I don't know who they are. Uh, and then another person did an unboxing of it. So, oh, there's like 44 videos of it. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, everybody and their freaking mother has has played this game. Three years ago? My goodness. I guess huh, that's back when I was head down working for our company. So, um, yeah, three years ago, three years ago. Wow. A lot of stuff, a lot of stuff there. So you can go check that out. Uh, let's see, really wish, um, the latest God of War, do a list of dice chuckers. That's a cool thing. Yeah, Friday night from Chattanooga. I'll start walking now. You still won't get here in time, Eric. You walk too slow. Gotta get a little pep in that step, boy. Um... Latest God of War games do a fun job of mixing Greek mythology with North mythology video games. I mean, yeah. Uh, you'll choose Norse. I don't know if you can choose one or the other. I don't think you are. I don't know that you are one or the other. But yes, if I have to choose, yes, I'm going to choose Norse because, yes, I want to win. Beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> uh, I really wish we could invent teleportation, right? That would be cool. Anyone else notice that when Sam wears black shirt in that chair, it looks like he's got a major hunchback? Yes, I know. Can't unsee it. I know, Doug. I know. But I use, I usually wear black shirts. It's just the way it is. And it just happens that my chair is black. But it is the chair. See? There you can see it's partially gray. It's not just my hunchback. Uh, Quasimodo, you say? <laughs> Uh, yeah, he does blend in a bit into the chair. He does. Q. Igar jokes from Young Frankenstein. My mom said he looks like he's wearing a monk's hood. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, it was pretty late on Kickstarter. Yeah, pretty late. Thor died? Hmm. Yes, there is a snake on the back. Actually, I bought this at the, um, the Grunt Style shirt uh, shop in San Antonio, Texas. It's their headquarters. So it's got a yellow snake, yellow rattler with uh, Texas in the background there. So yeah, that's the one I got. Just joking. I haven't started it yet. Angry snake. Yeah, he's not too happy. But um, yeah. Uh, Thor died. Why would you say such a thing? You're so hurtful, JT. Thor died. <laughs> That's never going to happen. Thank you, Eric. Um, let's see. What do we do? Um, okay, those things, those things. Um, I can actually write down. Because I, I have actually made determination on some of this stuff. Um, so Odin's Ravens and um, Raptor. Don't know any of that stuff yet. Um, oh, 
Oh yeah, nature games, that's not happening. Not right now. We're doing 2012 this week. And then we'll do nature games next week. The week after that. Okay, well, I'm actually talking through my head here. Um, JT, since you're here, we're going to have to record our nature games lists. Um, yeah, we're going to have to record them uh, this weekend, uh, probably Saturday or Sunday. Got to do that, buddy, um, because we're I'm going to be gone at Commas Con, 18th, 19th, 20th, and 21st, and then so I have to get the uh, nature themed games up before I leave on the 18th. So yeah, we'll get that done. TI4 solo Thursday. Not quite. Yep. Every time I see Don't Tread on Me, I start singing the Metallic song. Yeah. Don't tread on me. Yep. Liberty or death. What we so proudly hail. Was expecting the traditional Gadsden flag snake. Well, it's a play on it because it's a yellow rattler. So it worked out. Looking forward to that. This nature themed games are my favorite. You know, it's interesting. I've already made my list and I have come to the conclusion that I just don't like a lot of nature themed games. <laughs> I mean, it was pretty hard for me to put together a list because <clears throat> I, I don't know why. I don't, it's not because I hate nature. It's just, um, I, I think many of the nature themed games, at least the ones that I did not include on my list, they're super heavy games. It's like they rely a lot upon, um, I don't know, just heavier mechanisms and I just don't enjoy them. So I, I, I think, I, I think I put together a good list, but it's definitely not like I, you know, I, the heavier games are just not going to be there. That's just the way it is. <laughs> not enough Vikings. <laughs> yeah, maybe so. But Vikings were very, I don't know, they, they lived in nature. They were very natural living people, I guess. They had to live off the land, so. Wow, missed JT. Hi, dude. Love your gaming gamers ranch thingy. Okay, sorry, Sam. No worries, dude. JT's a cool kid, cool cat. Uh, let's see. Uh, was expecting. Oh yeah. Um, looking forward to that list. Okay, not enough Vikings. Yep. Okay, so that's another thing we've already kind of talked about. It. Spring Comics Con uh, is coming up on the 18th through 21st. So those uh, three days, basically 18th, 19th, and 20th. Uh, we won't we won't have anything on the channel. I'll probably try to do some uploading of shorts uh, those three days uh, so that we still have some content going up, but it won't be the uh, same things as like, you know, live solo plays, live Q&As and all that other kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, we'll see. I'll, I'll talk to uh, Daryl, uh, the guy that runs the thing, and see if we can get a little bit of a better connection to maybe uh, do a stream from... Uh, from Comus Con, maybe that will work. Maybe it won't. I can't. I can't guarantee it. They're way up in the mountains, so getting a uh, a really good connection that will stream well might not be in the cards. But we'll see how that goes. Um, but that's coming up here pretty soon. Um, not this weekend, but the following weekend. Um, bottom five and top five of 2012. Uh, the bottom five is usually on. Fridays, but because the Dice Tower is doing a um, a 36-hour marathon uh, over the 11th and the 12th, and a little bit of the 13th, I think, um, they uh, we're going to push off doing the bottom five until f Sunday. So Sunday the 14th, the bottom five 2012 will come up. And then the top five for 2012 will be on Monday the 15th, as per usual. Uh, and then uh, nature-themed games are going to be on um, 
um, let's see, bottom five nature games will be on the Dice Tower on the 19th, and then the top five. <coughs> will be on the 22nd. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, so yeah, uh, any other questions? Let's see here, tons of light. Where is that con, Tom says. Okay, Comus Con is actually up here. It's not, it's less, it's not really a convention. It's more like a board gaming retreat um, it happens at a uh, place called uh, Comus Meadows Bible Camp. It's uh, up in the mountains uh, here up by Blewett Pass. And uh, uh, it, it just lasts for those three days, 18th, 19th, 20th, 21st. And, uh, you know, I think they have tops like 30, 40 people uh, that come to this thing over the years. Um, I don't know how many people are going to be there this year. Uh, but he does a couple of them. He does a spring and then he does a fall. Um, and the reason he doesn't do winter or summer is because he, uh, he, he the, the Comus Meadows is used as like a, a retreat venue for um, youth groups and churches and, and that type of stuff. So um, in the winters, they have winter retreats. In the summers, they have youth camps and, and that kind of stuff. So, but in the, in the spring and the fall... Um, he has a little bit more of an open schedule. So he has uh, Comus Con in the fall and in the spring. And this is the spring Comus Con that we're going to be going to. Um, I think JT might, said he might be able to make a day, a, a day, one of the days, but he won't be able to go for the whole thing. Um, uh, you know, instead of top 10, make a top five with Jesse and JT. What is that? Uh, oh, for nature games. Ah, 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 ah. Well, we we did. I I, I was able to put together ten nature themed games. Uh, it's not a problem, but uh, that that's not a bad idea um, to do to do those things. There are tons of light nature themed games. Uh, I don't play heavy games, so most of the nature themed games I have are light or medium at most. And what is that con? Okay, I already did all that. Sam, chat with me later. I could bring my mobile Starlink set up to, to Comus. Oh, okay, Doug, I will talk to you about that. Um, when put together, those pencils look like chopsticks. Yes, they do look like chopsticks. Um, and you could pro you probably could easily use them as such. So, beep, 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 beep. You can absolutely do that. But they don't have very much grip on them, so. Picking up a magnet is not going to work well. Um, but another pin. Bink. There we go. See? There we go. <clears throat> uh, must see TV. Watching Sam work. I'm buying the DVD. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm t it's a weekend preview, man. That's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm talking about what's coming up so that you guys can be in the know. Uh, I'd assume getting up there in the winter may be tricky. Yeah, well, it, it can be. Uh, we actually, JT and I went up there for a uh, board game day, um, just kind of like an impromptu thing. <clears throat> and uh, we went up there around, I don't know, it was like 11 in the mor in the morning, almost lunchtime. And we played a couple games and then we looked outside and it was coming down. Snow was coming down. And by the time when we got up there, of course up in the mountains there was snow on the ground, but it was traversable. And I think it probably snowed about eight inches, maybe a foot in just the time that we were there. And so JT and I were like, man, we better go before we get stuck up here. And sure enough, sure enough, that was my phone. I usually have my phone off, but we were, uh, we didn't want to miss a phone call yesterday afternoon. But anyway, sure enough, on the way back down, I mean, JT's a boss at uh, driving in the snow, but 
he got a little bit sideways coming down off that, that mountain road. And I mean, the edge of the road is just, <laughs> there's nothing there except trees and a drop. Um, he got a little sideways and I think it made us both puckered a little bit, but that was, that was something else. He, 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 he was a boss and he righted, he righted the ship, um, very masterfully, but, um, yeah, it, it's it's a little bit of a chore. It's a little bit of a chore to get up and down get, get up and down off that mountain. Uh, let's see here. Nice dual purpose. Yeah, I would love to see Coliseum on Throwback Tuesday, but uh, best with at least four players, I think. Yeah, that's true. Coliseum would be a good one, Robert. Um, also never played Champions of Midgar, so that would be fun to watch as well. That's something I might be able to teach Jess. Um, and uh, I think it would be worth it. Uh, Champions is a good game. It's just not very old. How old is... Let's see. I don't... I, I don't remember... Um, I don't remember... 2015. Yeah, well, okay. Uh, 2015, the expansions came out in 2017. So... It is a good seven years old. I mean, even from the date of the expansions, the base game is 2015, so it's almost 10 years old. It's nine years old. Um, so I guess, yeah, that would that would fall into the, uh, the, the same category there. So that might be something to look at. Thank you, Robert. That's, those are good. Uh, Midgard would be cool. Hope JT had his big old truck. He did. Oh, my gosh, is it a big truck. I swear, when I walk up to his truck... The hood is six feet off the ground. The hood is six feet off the ground. That's crazy. Um, really like to see a Champions of Midgard live play. Cool. Uh, trying to get the expansion, but it is hard. Yep, it is. All agree. Champions of Midgard, it is, Sam. Mark it. <laughs> uh, let's see. When would that be? That would be uh next tuesday maybe i don't know we'll have to see you're fired from your own channel no you're fired from your own channel <laughs> uh champions is a good game for a second there i thought of the ttrpg champions is a bonker superhero rpg uber crunchy yes uh i think uh tom actually ran a few campaigns of that back in the day and yes it is very uh, it's very hilly here, so when we do get snow, it can get tricky as well, but not many sheer drop-offs of death around here, yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, fine. Eric, I'll mark it down. Gosh. Can he tell that I'm not writing anything? I hope not. I don't want to get fired. <laughs> uh, I need a step, I'd need a step ladder to get into his truck. You would. He almost does. It's that thing. Yeah, I'm just kidding. He does actually. He does have a step, uh, you know, a, a running board on on the side of his truck. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, Tom is currently DMing a D and D game on the Dice Tower channel. Yeah, I know. I've seen that. Uh, very amusing to watch. Tom has a wild imagination. Yep. Uh, he very much does. Um, he's he he's he's a good DM. Um, or GM, you know, whatever. But, um, uh, yeah, we did that. We did we did a couple of uh, D&D things when I was there, but it just didn't hit the right vibe, I think, when, when uh, we were there together. Um, but it's good to see that they're doing it now. It's, 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 those are fun videos to watch. On probation. <laughs> um so yeah uh it was uh getting uh to and from Thomas meadows is uh depending on the year can be very uh tricky as a matter of fact <clears throat> so much fun yep they are um my one my one reservation eric with uh champions of midgard is um i don't think it's too much i don't think it is um it's just a worker placement game. It's not that far off in complexity with Stone Age, although it is more complex than Stone Age. <clears throat> and Jess enjoyed that one. Yeah, we'll give it a try. All right, I'm writing it down. Um, I 
There you go. I actually wrote it down now, Eric. You can take me off probation. <coughs> um, might as well just go ahead and write down it belongs in the museum too. Now that's probably going to be one of the things, one of the times where we don't do the same because, well, I don't know. That might be a good one to, to go through. I might have to take the entire time and just do one, but I, I usually don't like doing that. I want to do two games in the It Belongs in a Museum series, so um, we'll, have to, we'll have to see about that. Next week's Fireside Chat will not be a week in preview because there's not going to be a whole lot to talk about. As far as I, as far as far as that's concerned, so but we'll talk about something on the next fireside chat next week. We'll see how that goes. Um, but uh, let's see here. Uh, I think Jesse would do fine with champions. It's not too much. It's not too much more. I, I'm the same thing. I, I'm of that opinion. Yeah. Um, with expansions. Yeah. Here's the thing. I don't like playing Champions of Midgard without the expansions. I think Valhalla and the Dark Mountains are necessary expansions to really make Champions of Midgard what it should be. Um, I think if you play without the expansions, after having played with them, the game feels like it's missing something. Like, egregiously. That's what it feels like to me. So I don't like playing Champions of Midgard without the expansions. Um, <clears throat> should I do that as I'm teaching it to Jess? Maybe, but I think she can still handle it because it's really not, it's really not adding that much complexity to the base game, those expansions. I'm in a valley. My snow sliding is like skate park luge. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Just go up one day. It's actually fun, right? <laughs> We'll find something to talk about. That's not an issue with us. That is true. Mountains aren't as necessary as Valhalla. Well, yeah, I yeah, I guess so because the dark mountains bring in the uh, the giants. Um, <clears throat> I just I really just think that both both are necessary. I think. I I just can't. For myself, I can't um, split those two expansions together. If you play with one, you play with the other. But I know that they're modular. Um, um, I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll, we'll definitely play it next week on Tuesday. Not tomorrow. A week from tomorrow. And um, that, will, that will be what we do. But... Um, I don't know what expansions we'll use. Hello, Karen. You're late. Don't worry about it. I want the Valhalla expansion, but uh, in here, it's really difficult, almost impossible. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, I don't... I... Is English language a problem, Nuno? I mean, obviously it isn't. You can, you can communicate with us, so... It obviously isn't, but I, as far as what you want, do you have an English copy of uh, Champions of Midgard? Um, I might be able to do something for you. I, I, Lance is a buddy of mine, but and he works for Gray Fox. So if if I don't know if they do, if they have a copy, I might be able to get one for you. Um, of course, you know, not for free, but uh, highly recommend trying to get Valhalla. Yep, so do I. I absolutely do. Well, wow, the, man, those ads are coming up a whole bunch. Dude, do they come up less if you, if you don't skip them? Stay up and go to the Alaboom again sometime. Uh, I only buy English games. Okay, all right. Well, here's the thing, um, Nuno. Flipside, obg at gmail.com. Email me, um, and uh, I'll try to get you and Lance hooked up. But um, they come up less when you use an ad blocker. Wow. Wow. Of course they do. Um, 
so flip side OBG, I'll put it down here. Flip side uh, OBG at gmail.com. Oops. Uh, Nuno, uh, send me an email to that email address that I just put in the chat, and I'll try to get you and Lance hooked up to see if uh, we can get you a copy of Valhalla. They may be sold out. I don't know. Um, just let me know. Or YouTube Red or whatever it is called anymore. Yeah, see, that's the thing. I was thinking about this yesterday. It's like, if you want to monetize with YouTube, you have to get, you have to get, uh, you have to let them put ads on your videos. Okay, got it. But then YouTube subverts that and says, if you don't want to pay for ads, or if you don't want to see ads, you can give us money and you won't have to watch the ads that we make everybody put on their videos so that they can get money from their videos. So it's like, and, and, and I don't think, I don't think that the content creators get any cut of that, which I, I guess it's, I, I guess it's smart of them to do that, but it's, it's kind of a, I don't know, it just seemed kind of, I was just thinking about that the other day. It seemed, seemed kind of wonky. I'm like, wow, that's really kind of jerky. Um, but maybe I'm just looking at it wrong. Yeah. Or pay to not have something such as a scam. True. We'll do Sam. Thanks. You're welcome, Nuno. Uh, it's weird. I stream on my TV and watch the chat on my computer. I've gotten three ads on my computer and none on the stream. Huh. Spurs fan is here. Lewis is back. He's on my way home. By the way, I like to see Waste Land Express delivery service played with JT or Jesse or both. I like that one time you played on Dice Tower. Buy the premium YouTube. Worth it. No more ads. Uh, I remember Watto talked about that once. Content creators do get a cut from YouTube Red, but it's a smaller cut than from a proper ad. Oh, well, thank you, Kabuki Kitten. I appreciate that. Uh, he did the math once on one of his vids. Not have something? What the? <laughs> YouTube will nickel and dime you every way they can. Yes, I know. Really, you don't get a cut of my premium money. That sucks. That's fine. I I don't have to get a cut of everything. I just, and again, I wasn't even going that far down that path that day. I just, you know, spent a few minutes thinking about it. And I was like, wow, that's kind of, that's kind of jerky. But now Kabuki has said that um, Rado has actually done the thing. I saw Rado at Dice Tower West, by the way. Um, I don't think I've, I've even said that. It was, it was neat to see him. I didn't stay for very long. He was in the middle of a game, so I didn't want to, and I was just walking around uh, in between my... That's just the way things go here, isn't it? Um, so I was just walking around, kind of getting the lay of the land, and and saw him playing some games, said hi to him, and uh, that was good to see. Uh, YouTube also double dips on super chats. Yeah, I know that. I know that. Yeah, we only get a, a cut of the super super ads, super chats. Um, I just have to give you ten percent of my paycheck. LOL. <coughs> No, you don't. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, let's see here. Mm hmm. Mike mishap. I will say this: the Snickers coffee is growing on me. The more I, the more I drink it, the more it comes out. Liberation Game Design, great to see. Dead of Winter got spot two on your post-apocalyptic list video earlier. I really enjoy Dead of Winter. I think it's one of the best. Uh, zombie themed games that's out there. Oh, I need to get your eyes. Need to clean your eyes out, buddy. Sorry, I didn't realize. Oh, yeah, I know, Papa. You should have cleaned my ear out. But um, <clears throat> Derek S is here. Hello, Derek. Good to see you. And that's another game I gotta get to the counter. Mmm, it's right over there. Gotta get the Dutch resistance to the game to the table. Strider wandering in. Yep, he always wanders in. He, he just, whenever he wants to wander in, he just comes says hi. Isn't that right, buddy? Oh, got that goop on. I'm sorry, pal. We're going to do that as soon as the stream's over. 
Yes. Ooh, scratchy scratch. Uh, let's see. Snicker, sniffers coffee equals heroin. No, that's not true, Bushman. It is not heroin. Oh, he likes the necky scratch. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. You like that. Mm. But, uh... Uh, let's see. I only drink coffee if it's flavored with fancy flavors. Ooh. Well, I think this might fall under that, uh, the fancy flavors. Uh, you didn't like Pandemic Season, uh, Legacy Season 2 as much as 1? My group preferred it, I think. It was much more challenging for us. Uh, we won, I think, all games in Season 1, but 1, I think. Well, here's the thing. I don't necessarily always want all of my games to be uber-challenging. And I'm not, I'm not trying to add words to your mouth there, to your statement, Kabuki. Um, but I, I, sometimes I just like to, instead of being challenged, I like to meander, if that makes sense. Uh, instead of going on a hike, I want to meander <laughs> up the mountain. I don't want to necessarily... <laughs> I have to get to the top so I can say that I hike to the top. You know, I, I don't want to do that. I just want to kind of enjoy the theme and enjoy the banter and enjoy the uh, lighter mechanisms and all that kind of stuff. I don't necessarily... Um, I understood why Season 2 was the way it was because it made sense um, chronologically. You know, if you have this huge apocalyptic event that happens uh, at the beginning of the game in Season 1, I'm staying with my argument that it happened. And February all the way through December was post-apocalyptic. Um, anyway, I get why the theme was... It just... I, I enjoyed it less because I realized that they were trying to um, simulate the lack of communication, the breakdown of that network of communication so that you don't know what's going on on the other side of the world. So traveling over there is like, I don't know. But it's like, I think I would still remember where everything is. You know, I I, I don't know. It, it just, it, it was a, I, I just didn't enjoy season two as much as I did season one. I thought season one was a great, um, a great uh, way to use that. And season two felt less like Pandemic and more like a game that was based on Pandemic. And... There was just, I, I didn't dislike it. Don't get me wrong. I just liked season one better. Uh, let's see here. Pray for me now driving in a thunderstorm. Ooh, in Texas. So that's saying something. Yeah, be careful. Be careful, be careful. Um, do I have a patron yet? No, I don't. Um, by the way, you have taken my YouTube board game viewing time from the Dice Tower. Good or bad, Sam? Hello. Uh, no, I don't. I, I don't think it's good or bad. Um, uh, you know that that's the cool thing with having YouTube is that you can just watch whatever you want to watch whenever you want to watch it. It doesn't mean that you have to. Uh, I I definitely don't expect <laughs> exclusive loyalty, um, and I know the Dice Tower doesn't either. Um, but I will say that uh, I put out less content than the Dice Tower does, so I guess it's easier to keep up on what I'm putting out than what they are. You have to kind of pick and choose uh, with the Dice Tower uh, what you watch and what you don't watch. And, and uh, my frequency of content is much easier to follow because I just don't put out as much. Um, Vanessa says that uh, it does. I had an Eclipse latte at a local coffee shop last week. It was flavored white and dark chocolate. That sounds pretty good, actually. I usually get a uh, white chocolate. At Steamers West, I get a white chocolate, a sugar-free white chocolate mocha with uh, 
sugar-free coconut and um, um, and sometimes instead of doing sugar-free coconut, I get uh, um, uh, sugar-free hazelnut and sugar-free caramel. Then other times I'll do sugar-free um, Irish cream with sugar-free uh, caramel. Um, so it just depends on what, what mood I'm in. But more often than not, it's a white chocolate mocha with uh, coconut cream. I think next month we're going to start season zero. That sounds like a good idea. I'm also toying with the idea of doing a Risk Legacy stream uh, with uh, me and JT. Just do like, uh, maybe just let the uh, things record. Let the, let the, uh, the streams record and we'll play a, a seat and just put that up. I don't know. We're, we'll, we'll think about that. Um, I have to say that I'm with JT on that one. Season one is apocalyptic. Season two is post-apocalyptic. I know, Kabuki. I've read your comment. I know you think I'm wrong. Stop browbeating me. Sort of like Mad Max is apocalyptic. Mad Max 2, The Road Warrior, is post-apocalyptic. I don't know. A lot of the Mad Max stuff is pretty post-apocalyptic. <laughs> I mean, I know Mad Max technically happened before, but I think he was out in the middle of nowhere. So it just kind of took a while for it to get to him. I don't know. It's been a long time since I've seen Mad Max. I remember scenes of him being in a city and in an apartment or in a house, was it? I can't remember exactly. Uh, let's see. Uh, I agreed with you on your post. Uh, season two is the favorite. Uh, we've played all three in our fourth playthrough of the series now with different groups. Uh, my group loved season zero. We haven't finished season zero yet. Um, I haven't played Pandemic, period, Nuno says. Wow. Really? Wow. Um... I, I have had coffee there three times now, and each latte I had was delicious. Plus, the owners are Christians, and we'll put different Bible verses on the cup sleeve. Oh, that's cool. That's a neat idea. Um, four plays. Nice. Those are amazing games. Just wondering if you're going to have more why it's there. I've kind of moved past the why it's there into the... Um, into the... Um, it belongs in a museum, so it's kind of the same thing, but it's a little bit more hands-on, and it's a little bit more of a, um, a deeper dive into those games that are on my shelves. So it kind of scratches the same itch, but I get what you're saying, Donna Anna, about having those Wyatts there because it's it's an entire shelf. Uh, my thing was is that I was tr having trouble getting good shots of the shelves because of how close or to the to the uh, uh, floor and and ceiling that some of my shelves are it's my my cameras only go up so far and then I have to get up on a ladder to do some of them it's a little bit daunting so um, they require a little bit more white chocolate hazelnut is fantastic you are absolutely correct Vanessa that's why I keep drinking it uh, let's see Texas storms look for overpass coverage or ditches bail when necessary you are absolutely correct Eric um, I remember getting caught in a Texas hailstorm once in a Ford Festiva. Uh, my car looked like a red golf ball afterwards, and I was super rattled. Um, and I was about 20 feet away from an overpass, and I, I had to stop. So, yeah, you are absolutely correct, Eric, in everything you just said. I feel... Uh, more of a relationship with you than Dice Tower. Oh, well, that's fine, too. Uh, there's nothing nothing wrong with that at all. Al Hernandez got to see the eclipse here in Frisco, and it looked pretty cool. It went dark. Yep, that's cool. Uh, we did season one about six to eight months ago. Need a break from pandemic for a while. Loved Rick, Risk Legacy. Easily one of my favorite legacy games. Yep. And the first Mad Max Society is starting to fall or is in the process of falling. Yeah, see, here's the thing, and I know you think I'm wrong, but here's the thing. If society is beginning to crumble, that means something apocalyptic already happened. 
and the effects of that are starting to make society collapse. So I think the whole idea of society collapsing is a post-apocalyptic idea because whatever is causing that already happened. <laughs> but I know, I'm, I'm strange. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm okay with being strange. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I remember when we played Pandemic Legacy, I thought it would burn me out on Pandemic, but in the end, I think it made me appreciate the base game even more. That is absolutely a positive statement, absolutely a correct statement as well. Um, it's kind of the same thing as with um, deck builders. There was a specific deck builder that put deck building back on the map for me after Dominion. Dominion killed deck building. I did not want to play any more deck building games after playing Dominion so much. I was so done with deck building because I was like, "Is this? if this is the best that you can do with this mechanism, go ahead and trash it because I'm done with it. Um, but there, there, were, there were a couple of games, one in particular that I'm thinking about. I just don't want to say it because it'll spoil uh, of the list that we recorded yesterday. But um, it, uh, it put deck building back on the map for me. And um, I totally understand what that means. Uh, I ban myself from paying Pandemic. Anytime I do, I blow it somehow and we lose. <laughs> Uh, gotcha. Thanks for explaining. You're welcome, Don Anna. Um, I think my wife was done with pandemic more than me. She's ready to go play again now. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, you, you kind of burn yourself out on, on playing the same because it, if you're not careful, it does kind of feel like the same thing over and over and over again. But I get it. Uh, never played pandemic. Is it Jesse level or harder? Um, it's Jesse level. I'll go ahead and put it that way. Uh, and I, I do want to be clear, and I know you don't mean it this way, Karen. But um, I don't anybody else. I don't want anybody else thinking that uh, I think Jesse is um, dumb or dim-witted or anything like that. Um, uh, Jesse just is very, very particular about the kinds of games she enjoys, and if it's too heavy, she just doesn't enjoy it. It's not that she can't do it; she can. She just won't enjoy it. And so we're very careful about that kind of thing. So when, when we say it's Jesse level, uh, yes, Jesse enjoys playing Pandemic. I don't think, like, she, I don't think she really enjoyed um, uh, uh, Season Zero very much, but I don't think any of us were really vibing on Season Zero that much either. So that, that was more of a group thing than anything else, I think. But she's never played season one. She's never played season two. I don't think she's played regular Pandemic. She has played Commission. I taught her, taught her how to play Commissioned, and that's kind of Pandemic in reverse. So she definitely, she definitely gets it, and she enjoyed Commissioned. So uh, I, in answering your question, Karen, yes, it's a Jesse's, le it's a Jesse level uh, game. Uh, most of the most of the games I play. Most of those I play games with do not want to play cooperatively, so I rarely get to play co-op games. I like them, though. That is the thing, right? There's a lot of people out there that enjoy co-op games. There's a lot of people that don't prefer co-op games. They want to play competitively, and I get that. Um, and, and that is a, a hard thing to get past. Um, one of the guys that helps us host... Uh, the board game nights, uh, he will actively avoid cooperative games. He does not like playing cooperative games. He wants comp competition, um, which is hard for that kind of uh, situation because more often than not, I think co-op games uh, in situations like those go over well because it, it kind of negates a lot of the anxiety or at least part of the anxiety that people bring into those kinds of situations. New people don't know uh, the new people, uh, so I don't want to compete against them because I don't know how how much can I compete, how much can I trash talk or whatever before things are awkward, you know. And those are difficult things to to uh, to address on a first time, and and you can hit or miss, right? Um, if you if you have a situation that turns somebody off, you've lost them for good. They're gone. They won't come back. Um, 
But the other opposite end of that, uh, you know, spectrum is also true. You'll 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 play games with people that absolutely have a blast, and they'll keep coming back. So, it's it's one of those, um, you know, almost it's one of those damned if you do, damned if you don't type situations where, uh, you know, if you choose to play a cooperative game and, and somebody doesn't want to tell you that they don't want to play a cooperative game. They'd rather compete because, again, they're in that kind of situation where they don't know you, you don't know them. Uh, you can you can hit or miss on, in, on either side of the spectrum. So it's one of those things that uh, we, we love the fact that, that uh, this guy comes because when he comes, he wants to play cooperative games and he will uh, find people that want to play cooperative games and he'll run those games and then we'll run the ones that that are maybe less keyed up for for uh, competitiveness and, and more leaning more towards cooperation. So it's a good um, uh, dichotomy that we have within the group. So uh, I just want it to stay healthy that way. I think Pandemic is a lighter weight medium game. Yes, absolutely is, Tom. Uh, I can understand your logic. I think when people hear post-apocalyptic, they expect some period of time to have passed. Understood. Legendary Encounters Alien deck building game is still my favorite pure deck building game. That's a good one. That's a really good one. Um, I really thought that the Legendary Encounters uh, system worked well with the Aliens IP. So that was a, a great, fun game. If you buy Vanilla Pandemic, On the Brink is almost a must-buy expansion. It adds in a lot of new roles to spice up the game and give it more variety. Understood. We absolutely love the Pandemic series, Legacy and Standard. Emily's favorite is Iberia. Mine too. Love that one. Uh, I love Rising Tide because of the natural resource engineering theme. Cool. Aladdin happened post-apocalypse. Because why else would Genie make all those references? <laughs> Co-ops are great for people new to the hobby. Uh, they are way less intimidated when they are on the same team as the experienced player. Absolutely. Iberia is probably the best pandemic all-in-one box that isn't one of the legacy ones. Um... Uh, Jesse Level, Sam needs to strive to get there. Still love you, Sam. I know. I know. Have you played Wrath of the Lich King or Clone Wars yet? Clone Wars, no. Wrath of the Lich King, yes. Iberia is also just visually beautiful. That is correct, Doug. Clone Wars was a fun one. Uh, that was no moon. <laughs> That's funny, Vernon. Welcome, Vernon. Good to see you, bud. Uh, played Let's Clean, not Clone Wars. Uh, Sam, what was the first board game that started you into the hobby of building up to the number of games you have now? It was Catan that started my obsession. You know, um, I don't know that I can narrow it down to one particular game. I really don't. Uh, I think for me, it was more about doing things with the guys than it was the actual collecting of games and building up a, a collection like this. I think it was more about what everybody was playing. Uh, it started with, uh, back in college, it started with um, uh, Star Wars, uh, the Star Wars CCG from Decipher. Uh, from there, it went to... Um, Battletech CCG. We played that one a lot as well. They also got into Pokemon. I wasn't into it, so I didn't get into Pokemon. We also tried Magic the Gathering um, way back when, but um, it didn't really catch on with, any, with me particularly. I think Tom still plays um, with commander decks and stuff like that. He doesn't collect, he doesn't collect it very much anymore. We both had a, a a pretty you know, decent-sized collection of uh, Star Wars CCG, though, from Decipher. Um, so I think it, it really kind of started with that. Uh, a board game that brought it to the limelight. The board game hobby to the limelight as well, to kind of bridge that gap between uh, card games and board games. I would imagine... 
It was something like, um, I want to, I want to go with, um, I want to go with probably, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to say, man, Games like Samurai Swords, uh, Risk 2210 AD. Um, those were probably the ones that bridged that gap between the two. Uh, and with when we moved over to Korea, I saw the community aspect of it. And when we lived in America, it was pretty much just what me and a bunch of buddies did. Uh, it wasn't really a community thing until we moved to Korea and we started seeing things like uh, board game cafes pop up. And that was like, oh, wait a minute. This is this is something cool. Um, so um, I, I would probably go with you know, games like 20, Risk 2210 AD because I had played Risk before, but 2210 AD was just... Um, just like a, a next step, and I liked it a lot. I would probably go with that, I would imagine. Pandemic Iberia, it's the only pandemic I want to buy for obvious reasons. <laughs> Un understood, Nuno. Um, Vernon says the next battle will be between Sif, Mimir, Eagle, uh, Hreisvelg, Sigi, Ratatosk versus Odin, Giri, Freki, Hunan, Munin, Ragnar Lothbrok, and Gulenbursti. Uh, in case you're wondering, Vernon's talking about Mythic Battles uh, Ragnarok. He's been sharing some pictures of his battles and the miniatures that he's painted uh, since his copy came in, and I have been uh, frothing at the mouth, um, watching them. Mine was Kriegspiel at age 13 after D&D &D with college students at UCF. Cool. Uh, Derek says he went from Settlers of Catan to Puerto Rico to exploring other titles and finding Dice Tower. Lots of my collection is influenced by the Dice Tower. That's cool. Uh, one of my first hobby board games was the Big Book of Madness. Uh, that, that game led me to the Dice Tower. That's cool. That's a, that was a fun game. Sort of always was a gamer, but gaming was different in the 80s. Played tons of D&D &D and other TTRPGs, uh, but also board games like Axis and Allies. Yes, Cosmic Encounter, Dune, Diplomacy. I hated Diplomacy. Never liked Diplomacy at all. Um, but Risk, Axis and Allies, Cosmic Encounter. Um, I also like the original Dune as well, but Diplomacy, no thank you. Uh, Catan revolutionized how I saw board games. It was nothing. It was like nothing else I'd played. Hmm. Good. Huge early Avalon Hill bookcase game buyer. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me, Eric. Yeah, I have a good supply of old Avalon Hill, too. Kabuki Kid says, what led me to the Dice Tower was Will Wheaton tabletop. Ah, that's cool. Uh, Doug says he discovered Access and Allies when I was 16, when he was 16, then found Clue, Great Museum Caper, but didn't discover true hobby games until much later. Cool. Never heard of Cosmic until I watched Dice Tower. I wonder if Cosmic was even available in Canada. I would imagine it probably was, but uh, it, it might have been hard to find. Uh, first game I, I ever saw that had expansions, Cosmic. Diplomacy, Killing Friendships, the game. Yep, that's exactly what that is. Hmm. All right. Well, it's three o'clock. I got to get ready to go pick up the kids. It has been an hour and a half. Um, so that is about how long I had planned on chatting with all you guys. Squad leader here. Ah, squad leader. Say, I've never played squad leader. I've only played advanced squad leader, uh, the starter kits. I've only played ASLSK. I've never played the actual game squad, squad leader. So um, that's going back a bit. Uh, earring for the first time that games had expansions kind of blew up my mind. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine how that is. Um, 
but that's it. My first Catan uh, was Catan through Tabletop show to the Dice Tower show and then play. Cool. That is awesome. All right. Well, I'm going to get on out of here. Um, be ready for uh, the unboxing of Divinis. Uh, it's going to come up in about an hour. Uh, so you can come back for that. And then tomorrow morning at about 10 o'clock in the morning, uh, I'll be doing It Belongs in a Museum. And we'll be doing uh, Odin's Ravens and Raptor on It Belongs in the Museum. And then tomorrow afternoon, uh, Jesse and I will play uh, Odin's Ravens and Raptor and uh, show those off to you as well. Thank you for joining me. I certainly appreciate it. Hopefully this has been informative and entertaining. I'm sorry if it was not one or the other or either. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll endeavor to do better next time. But anyway, thank you for joining. We will see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care.